Welcome and thanks for joining the Let's Talk Digital Marketing Podcast. Join host Mike Sharp of mikesonlineacademy.com as he shares valuable insights and advice, helping you to become digitally inspired. That's here on the Let's Talk Digital Marketing Podcast. So thanks for joining us, Jim, on the podcast. Um, so um, Jim Chetwode from We Are Chain. So, so we're starting at the beginning, well, relatively at the beginning. Um, so to start with, um, before the pandemic, you were working uh, in events. Um, so what, what were you doing exactly at, in, in that role? Yeah, we'd, um, we'd built a nice little business up looking after uh, agricultural shows or county shows. Um, and we had the Royal County of Berkshire show, the Surrey show and the Hertfordshire show. We were their sort of outsourced sales department selling all their trade stands and sponsorships. And how long were we do, doing that for? We'd, we'd been doing it since 2018, so we, we were approaching sort of second and a half year and about to get another show on board. So it was we were going to expand and get new staff and stuff like that. Um, and then the pandemic came in. <laughs> yeah. Had, had you worked with uh, IT and worked with uh, e-commerce like before, before yeah. at that time or before you were involved with events? Yeah, so originally my background is probably 20 years in digital marketing, working client side for sort of travel firms, adventure travel. And then I last eight or nine years working for a variety of agencies, doing video, uh, looking after people's websites and stuff like that, and just wanting to know everything I could about digital marketing. And we fell into the show thing as a kind of, you know, these things happen just karma, the, the show thing just became the business. Um, and we were doing bits and pieces of um, helping people with their websites and their e-commerce. My business partner, he is 10 years of owning his own e-commerce company. Um, so we do have a background in that, but we're out and out salespeople as well. So the selling the trade stands came naturally. Yeah, yeah. So I guess when the pandemic hit, I mean, what was your like reaction when that happened? So one of those things, it'll all be over by Christmas. Um, or in a couple of weeks and we, we had three shows one of which in May which we knew we were going to lose the Surrey one but we thought the Berkshire where we were actually we were filming the, the promotional video for them we were looking off their social media as well so it was a big customer for us we were thinking September it'll all be done by then um, yeah. but I think the 23rd of March Surrey went at about 9 30 in the morning Hertfordshire went about midday and by four o'clock in the afternoon the, the Royal Berkshire was all over so uh, quite annoying yeah and I suppose the suddenness of it then would, would have been quite difficult yeah. to deal with yeah and our I mean our other big client was uh, Intercontinental Hotel Group um, we were making videos for them in Atlanta Georgia we were making videos for their head office and that obviously dropped off the cliff overnight as well um, we were on retainer with them so we basically lost everything within 24 hours good oh, blimey okay so so what like the next day did you kind of decide to start so, we are chain and start yeah so new, we, start a new business yeah we did we are chain i we were we were called chain digital originally and then once the show thing got going we became we are chain so we went home i know i went via the pub had a couple of pints of stella <laughs> like smoked a few cheeky fags um, and shed a tear or two actually to be honest um, but so the next day I mean I was up at five I think nervous energy and just thinking what can we do what can we do what can we do knowing that there weren't going to be many clients out there for our services so we had this e-commerce experience and we decided what can we do we can help local shops in the area they're not no one can go to them but they're going to go busted they're not selling anything so we set up a shop um almost instantly on shopify called local shops to you we got a branding friend to create a nice logo for it i actually got my son to write out the names of all the shops we could help and we decided within sort of 10 miles of where we lived and, wow. um, and yeah and and developed from that we ended up with 30 or 40 shops on there a few pubs selling i mean the pubs actually selling fish 
and I ended up going out in the car, which was nice because it got me out legitimately at delivering stuff, you know, wearing masks, gloves, all the all the cleaning stuff. <laughs> um, but we sold loads of thousands of pounds worth of wine for a local wine merchant um, and just bits and bobs like coffee and everyday items. Wow. That, I, mean, that's, I mean, what do you know if that was being done anywhere else uh, at the time? What was that? <laughs> quite a few people coming up with sort of directory sites where you could you know how to shop local um there i think in bristol there's one that's carried on actually and it's a multi-million pound business now um i met the owner the wow. other day um but we also got involved with the volunteering sector in tisbury our local town a mile from here um they had i think 75 percent of the population was vulnerable and there's no supermarkets around here. There was certainly no supermarket deliveries, if you remember. They didn't get going around here for about six months. So we got a call from someone who'd set up the volunteering organisation to a, a, a start another shop on Shopify called the Tiz Box. And we created packages of food from 10 quid to 20 quid to 30 quid that people could either phone up the volunteers and get it donated to them um, by fundraising or they could buy it themselves because they couldn't leave home and we get it delivered um, and it was uh, a funny point on that was um, the guy who was helping me with logistics was head of um, uh, what do you call it head of um, operations at Ikea and the man who was doing our health and safety side of it was a professor from Porton Down wow. um, they just <laughs> happened to live within five miles of Tisbury and were, were roped in but it for me it was a it was an interesting experience of helping people and you know coming across some really great minds who way way above my pay grade so how did they find out about it was it local grapevine i mean it was amazing there were there was a lady i can't remember her name but who was in charge and i think she got 200 volunteers working together um wow. and you know, basically everyone who could go out in Tisbury was um, asked to come and help. And, and pharmaceuticals was a big one, wasn't it? Um, you know, they had drivers delivering from the local pharmacy out into the countryside here. So it was a huge operation run by a very powerful lady. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is, because uh, obviously it's a, it's a rural area where you live, isn't yeah. it? Like how, how many people live in Tisbury? I don't know much about Tisbury, I must admit. Tisbury is about 2,000 people. Yeah, I think it qualifies as a town. It's not quite a village. It's got a train station. Um, so probably 2,000. It's about the same size as my village. Um, so, But it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, there's no sort of main road to it. And a, a lot of the population are elderly. It's a sort of great retirement area. Yeah, because I just wonder whether the same thing would have happened in a bigger city. I mean, maybe you don't. You know, obviously things are different in a town, a bigger town, but that community spirit, do you think that's kind of resigned? You know, when you go to places like Shaftesbury and Blandford, there seems to be that community spirit there, which is sometimes lacking, you know, in the bigger, yes. bigger towns. Yeah, I mean, the, the big difference is Shaftesbury and Blandford both got Tesco's um, and several co-ops and things like that, whereas Tisbury's got a very small co-op. And a few little independent shops but there's no delivery function for any of those shops so it it had to be you know and and yes people live in tisbury but it's so small that you know 500 meters out of tisbury center and you're into the countryside so it's, it's also a pra just a practical uh yes. consideration as well that people had to get food delivered and business yeah. needs to, to kind of yeah. stay open somehow yeah, and bear in mind, you know, the disinfecting that's going on and you, you no one has any idea how this thing is transmitted. Yeah. So we're sort of, you know, we, we come to a gate and there's a message on it saying, please leave parcel, you know, hanging on gate. And they won't come out of the house until you've gone. Yeah. So like timeline wise, so the pandemic started in March. When was it kind of all up and running? You talk about a few months. We, we had, no, we had, we had uh, the online... Uh, the local shops for you up and running within probably four or five days so we started wow, selling that quick out. yeah the tis box thing you know um that took a bit longer and actually by by the time we got it sort of up and running we did a few boxes and then suddenly i think the government released those boxes that were actually being delivered by the government um but you know we'd 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 help we'd done our bit as it were yeah yeah so are those 
is the tis box is that still exist is that still no tis, tis box we took straight off um because it was swallowing quite a lot of our time um and concentrated on the other one the local shops and we didn't do it for a profit we, we only charged enough to cover the costs of shopify but um it, it was also to be honest you know it was a way of generating interest in what we were capable of with yeah. lots of local companies and shops yeah a great way of of a great pr for a start isn't it yeah that you're you know you're helping the community and yeah also it's, we we also um a local pub to tisbury called the Compass is in um you know lots of business immediate uh we were looking after their website anyway but we transformed it within a week into a sort of takeaway menu thing and i think they they did over twenty thousand pounds in a couple of months wow and it, wow. it became very popular but just we everything we did was learning you know which plugins to use to make it easy for the customer yeah so, so was it your first experience with Shopify, with these these websites? Or with these we had yeah, these our, websites, websites. We we had built for a customer uh, in 2018. We built a site for a, a dog bed manufacturer, um, and jokingly called it "Dogs, Dogs, Dogs" while we were building it. And at the end of building it, he decided, "No, I don't want to sell to customers. Actually, I'm going to annoy my my wholesalers." So he said, "Why don't you guys run it?" Um, and I'll give you a special deal on dog beds and drop ship them, which means that we sell it, he fulfills it. So we never have any stock. Um, and we did that and that was pottering along in the background and it was kind of a playground for us to mess around with Shopify. So we were, you know, somewhat familiar with it. Um, and that then sort of suddenly on bought a dog in the middle of 2020. And uh, we thought, let's put a bit of money on advertising and, and off it went. And that has now become um, its own business and it's growing very quickly. Um, and we're now sitting in a warehouse surrounded by beds and leads and collars and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and it's still for us, it's our, our experimental base to try new widgets, apps, live chat tools um, and how you present products and stuff like that and size guides and colouring charts um, and we just test everything on that and pass that on to our customers while it also makes us money. Yeah. Have, have you have you sold on Amazon before? No, we've steered away from Amazon, um, partly from an ethical point of view. I detest Amazon um, <laughs> just because so much of the money goes off to the USA. Um, you know, and I think everything we've done in this journey is about shop local and supporting yeah. local this is um we've got another business called design in dorset which is a marketplace for artisan designers we sell stuff like black cow vodka which is made of cow's milk um you know the the off cuts of when you make milk i can't remember what you call it but the curd of the way oh so yeah the no, curd the way yeah yeah so there's no waste in the in the milking process this stuff actually the waste gets made into vodka um you know uh beeswax wraps so instead of using cling film you can reuse beeswax wraps Every, everything we've done is sort of sustained you know there's been a sustainable angle to it yes by action yes. some of it and, and certainly the shopping local and supporting local businesses Ma the majority i think 90 percent of our dog products are uk made yes well that's good that's good yeah because I, I see a point about amazon and uh possibly ebay as well uh being kind of I mean, the other the other thing is, you, if you, you know, the margins aren't great on the dog stuff. And if your 20 percent is going off to someone else, um, it's not, you know, there's no money to be made. And yes, if you do the volume, there is. But it's um, you don't our experience is you don't get treated very well by the big players like that. You know, yeah. if you don't some, uh, horror, I've heard some horror stories from Amazon yeah. sellers. And we, we actually we, we built a fancy dress shop for someone last year who turns over a, i think yeah almost a million on amazon and ebay but it, it's 25 or 26 percent they lose on every sale and so they we they asked us to build them a shop on shopify so they could just start moving away from giving a lot of their margin to amazon and you know and it, it's kind of worked for them which is nice yeah that's what i like about shopify myself is it's more democratizes commerce doesn't it, it makes it accessible yeah. to anyone you know 
anyone. Well, I think the key to Shopify and Amazon is Amazon and Shopify are great competitors because Amazon is a marketplace as is Shopify, essentially. It's not, you know, you don't go to Shopify to buy stuff, but you go to shops on Shopify. And Shopify is built on Google Cloud, which means that Google and Shopify are best buddies and they tell each other what you need to do to succeed on Google kind of thing. Whereas Amazon being a competitor, is not as friendly with Google, even yes. though it does very well on it. But that's that's the bonus of Shopify. It really is in bed with um, Google. Yes, yeah, good combination. Yes, and so, so with the and that, I guess that's where the ethical trader um, comes from. Is it the ethical trader brand that you have at the moment? Yeah. So uh, because of our sort of success with the dog site. Um, and this is a partnership, it's not just our business, but um, in the food and snack world, there's a lot of up and coming brands that um, believe in sustainability. You know, they, they, they're built with a purpose and it's sort of Generation Z appealing millennials, you know, uh, there's no palm oil in the chocolates that I've got sat in front of me that I'm about to eat. Um, you know, and, and, and some of the stuff has got no sugar um, and the packaging, you know, you can tell if you buy a pack of, let's say a main brand pack of crisps, they have empty shoulders. So there's a lot of space and therefore packaging's empty. Like, I mean, my favorite chocolate biscuit, Jaffa cakes, there's about two inches at the top of a box that is empty. Just air. None of the, yeah. None of the brands we support or sell have that problem. They all thought of that sort of stuff. Um, and so we're building a subscription model business where for £20 a month, you'll receive a new box each month with a new variety of products in. And it can be anything from dark chocolate crunchy balls from Doisy and Dam, um, which are my personal favourites, to Delicious Yellow, which are sort of healthier snack bars, um, through to Candy Kittens, which are the most delicious sweets. Um, but they've got no palm oil in and no GSM, it's some um, MSG, sorry. Um, so it's it's exciting stuff and some brands you'll never have heard of and that's the whole point people come to us to promote their brands is it just food ethical trader or do you do um other other lines uh well uh, food and food and drinks so i've got a coconut drink here um <laughs> although all canned drinks not surprisingly but you know i mean part one is the food and snacks um and part two is you know as the name suggests we can go anywhere with it and it'll be bamboo toothbrushes through to you know we've had samples sent through of eco floor cleaner and stuff and it, it's something that i i really like and passionate about and I, I think it's a great brand and it's certainly on time and on target yeah yeah so, so how many so businesses do you have now under the we are chain umbrella so we've got four four businesses, um, and we're trying to keep it at that for the moment. But we've got We Are Chain, we've got Dogs, 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 we've got The Ethical Trader and Designed in Dorset. Wow, okay. And do you have, any, what are your plans for going forward? Is it uh, expanding from that? Or expanding yeah, so those the, four, getting them to reach their full potential? Yeah, so the, the idea is that We Are Chain is our agency where we're helping other people um, build their shops or, or actually run them for them um, and that gives us the money to survive as it were while we build these three three businesses um, and dogs 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 has gone so well that we've we we started with a kickstarter last year and he's now turned into a full-time employee so wow. he's kind of you know he's he's young but he's got straight into almost running a business yeah, um, yeah. he deals with the customer service the printing and packing and he's very good on the website um so the idea is then to have that going on with the ethical trader and bring people up and they you know apprentices they're doing fantastic training and it's it's really exciting i think at that age to be involved in something which changes every day um, yeah and so it's the idea is to build these things up into either revenue streams for us or maybe something we can sell yeah but from your experience uh like if someone what advice would, would you give to somebody who was maybe thinking of starting their own e-commerce business? I'd say go for it, but that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is with something like Shopify, you can get going very quickly. Um, and I would just say never stop. 
learning. There's so much information. Something like Shopify is endless forums to help you. Um, but just keep trying to find out what, you know, how to do stuff. Uh, YouTube's a great source of information. And sign up to newsletters that from SEM Rush and people like that, that that will help you reach your goals. Do you have any thoughts about other platforms like uh, Magento, WooCommerce, those other e-commerce platforms? Would you yeah. recommend just Shopify or would you, uh, you know, say it doesn't matter? It's more about... Yeah, I mean, this is, sorry, just going back to the previous one, I would say just pick a business that you love, you know, products that you're interested in. That's the key. Because if you're not interested in it, there's, there's no point. You're not going to have the passion. Um, yeah, the other platforms, I mean, we've hung our hat on Shopify. We're Shopify partners. Um, and that's, you know, there's a lot of platforms out there, but we don't want to be, um, we want to be master of one rather than master of none. Um, we do work with WordPress um, and have our own store. You know, we've had our own stores on WordPress, but we just find the simplicity of running a Shopify store much easier. Um, and without having to update everything all the time and worrying that a plugin will break it, um, which you don't really get that issue with Shopify. Um, and the Shopify support is fantastic. It's from a central location. If something goes wrong on WordPress, you're a little bit sometimes reliant on someone who's built an app in their, um, in their attic and then has stopped doing that. So, yeah, if you know your stuff, WordPress is great. Um, but if you're a bit more on the amateur side, then Shopify, you can get away with a lot more. Yeah, yeah. And, and this part of your uh, service is like, if so, could you help someone with their e-commerce website if they were struggling? Is that part of what you do? Yes, absolutely. You know, anything from SEO to the product descriptions and stuff like that. What, what we really aim to do in life is improve our conversion rate. Because if we've got X amount of visitors and we get one more to buy something, we've made more money without spending any. Yes. Um, so that's op op optimization is really key for us. It's just that user journey um, and, you know, make it speed. Speed is everything. But it's, yeah, we can help you. We've, we've been there, we've done that. We've, we've broken our website multiple times <laughs> and <laughs> but we know how to fix it. And so that's part of the fun for us is having a test bed to do stuff. Um, and you, you don't want to make those mistakes yourself. You know, we're, we're unique in the fact that DHL will turn up in half an hour if the storm permits and collect, you know, 20 parcels. So we know about fulfillment, we know about packaging, we know about leaflet inserts. And of course the website, and then also stock finance, how to get finance out of companies like Shopify or, or the new challenger banks coming up. So oh, it's yeah. not just the yeah. website, it's everything. Yeah, so like a wide, wide range of knowledge that um, is very, will, will be very useful for, for people. Yeah, the, I mean, the majority of website agencies do a cracking job on the website. They know about the SEO, but do they know how to save you money on choosing your courier? Um, you know, do they yes. have partners like we do with courier companies and finance companies where we can, you know, save you money on the running of your business, how to integrate zero with your Shopify, which is, you know, which is a great advantage being able to do that very easily. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, some quick fire questions I like to ask, uh, just related maybe to your business. Uh, one is, uh, favorite book. Business book or can be any. Well, say business book. Uh, what your favourite business book and your favourite book you read for okay. for pleasure? Yeah, favourite business book, uh, Purple Cow by Seth Godin, um, and I, probably Lord of the Rings, the whole thing. And uh, okay. I read it. Wow. I read it again and again and again, and I avoid the Hobbit bits because I think Aragorn's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, favorite music oh my favorite music um i'm definitely inclined to cheese um <laughs> i'm gonna say Taylor Not favorite Swift. food <laughs> Taylor Swift. Uh, Taylor, Taylor favorite Swift. Food. yeah favorite no, food you know this is going out to a lot of people yeah um favorite food like roast chicken roast potatoes and bread sauce and peas oh nice nice uh and uh favorite holiday destination 
Uh, France. Is that for the food? Uh, I'm going to say the food, the language, the landscape. Oh, I just love it. It's a much more relaxed lifestyle. Yes, yes. I got to agree, agree with you there. Uh, and uh, so finally, like, so if someone wants to get in contact with you, what is the best way of approaching you and best way of um, finding out about, find out, out more about what you do? Uh, if someone wants to get a hold of me, then uh, LinkedIn's a very easy way to get a hold of me. I'm always on that and keeping on the messages or um, my email is jim at wearechain.co.uk. Great, great. Well, thanks for doing the interview. It's been interesting. And uh, Brilliant. yeah, no problem. Thank and uh, hopefully I'll have you back in the future with more updates on what's happening with We Are Chain. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers, Mike. Cool. Thank you very cool. much. That's right. That's right. So recording over.